All right. All right, welcome back. Uh, the show is interactive. Use the hashtag Breakfast Daily on all social media platforms. Of course, we're still in Heritage Month. It's the last day, yes. so you can still use the hashtag Heritage Month on City. The WhatsApp line, if you want to engage in the conversations that we're having here, is 0550-585832. Now, um, the president, you know, gave us um, an update on uh, the 28th update uh, on, on Sunday. And um, basically, what we... What we Find found in the updates are that um, you know no mask mandates anymore. Uh, we're looking at the fallout of that. You know, so what is it that's coming? What what, what is it that people have, are going to be experiencing now? Um, hotels, cinemas, and all those um, various facilities that we we visit. And um, I, I I I recall you know having to go to the cinema. Well, visiting the cinema recently, when you know we're given like one quarter capacity, mm -hmm. right? And you, you you still mask up and go in. So they say, okay, so you can't buy popcorn, you know, and all those things. So <laughs> because when you, you're chewing popcorn, you have to take off your mask in the cinema. So what does what does it all mean? Let's take a look at what the president said first of all, and then we'll get into the conversations. From tomorrow, Monday, twenty eighth March. The wearing of face masks is no longer mandatory. I encourage all of you, though, to continue to maintain hand, enhanced hand hygiene practices and avoid overcrowded gatherings. All in-person activities, such as those that take place in churches, mosques, conferences, workshops, private parties and events, cinemas and theaters, may resume at full capacity as long as the audience and all participants are fully vaccinated. Hand washing and hand sanitizing points should be made available at these venues. Outdoor functions at sporting events, entertainment spots, political rallies and funerals may resume at full capacity again as long as all persons at those events are fully vaccinated. Government will continue to engage all religious and traditional leaders, agencies and institutions to encourage their congregants, subjects and citizens respectfully to be vaccinated to help achieve the 20 million target by June 2022. I'll also as the media to support this campaign in full. Fellow Ghanaians, we had to impose measures to limit the importation of the virus into our country, especially as our first cases of the virus were imported through the Kotika International Airport, KIA. Currently, the Kotika International Airport only allows fully vaccinated passengers who are in possession of a 72-hour negative PCR test result prior to embarkation and have a negative antigen test on arrival, entry into the country. Ghanaian citizens and foreign residents in Ghana who are unvaccinated or not fully vaccinated currently are given waivers by the Ghana Health Service to allow them entry into the country through the Kotoka International Airport. They must also have a, a 72 hour negative PCR test result prior to embarkation, take an antigen test on arrival. All right, well, let's talk about how this impacts the mm. hospitality industry. Yeah. The president of the Ghana Hotels Association is here, Dr. Edward Aka Nyamike. Thank you for joining us on Breakfast Daily. Great. Now, two years yes. since officially <laughs> COVID visited the world and was identified mm. as a pandemic. Mm. What has it been like for your industry mm. over the past couple of years? Let's start there. Right. Thanks so much for this opportunity. Hmm. Mm. Two years. Yes. Okay. So let's start from March 2020, 2020 mm. when the announcement was made about the presence of the virus <laughs> in yeah. Ghana. After Actually, the impact on that started in February. Mm. Yeah, because the cancellations had started. Mm. Okay, from other countries. Are, mm. From other countries. Okay, so the, some of the hotels started recording cancellations and uh, 
uh, when the announcement came, it wasn't really new to us, except that we didn't anticipate the impact mm. yeah. that was going to have. Uh, fast forward, the lockdown came. So we got to a point where some of the hotels shut down completely, even though we're not required to shut down, mm. let's yeah. see. Some of the hotels had to shut down. And the occupancy went <laughs> to zero, mm. okay. Even operating below 10%. Mm. Of course, it had challenges with staff. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we had issues with the with labor. Mm. We had issues with the uh, workers' union and all those things. Yes. Uh, over time, we were swinging like a pendulum. Mm. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it drops again. Mm -hmm. On and on and on. I think it's uh, only the second half of 2021 mm. when we started seeing some wow. form of stability. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even there, it was below the pre-COVID-19 performance mm. level. Okay. Mm. okay, so up to end of 2021, first quarter 2022 has been quite good, right. nearing pre-COVID performance level. Okay. So mm. some recovery it's has taken place. It's been a roller coaster place. ride. Exactly. exactly. And during the, the tougher times, mm. what did you do to compensate for the lack of business? And how were you able to stay, stay standing? Well, uh, the hotels dealt with the situation different ways. Okay. Some had to lay off some of the workers, unfortunately. Mm. Mm. Some had to come to some form of arrangement with the workers to reduce yes. their salaries. Some had to shut some of the wings mm. of the hotels. Okay, so reducing the operational level. And then some had to renegotiate loans they had taken. You mm. see, the <laughs> COVID came at the back of the high performance in 2019, yeah. 2019. Right, yeah. Yeah. so some of the hotels are going to borrow mm. money to upgrade their facilities yeah. Yeah. Uh, for the beyond the return okay so there were low issues with loans so some had to renegotiate the payment schedules and then uh, some of the hotels to had to veer into food delivery Okay. But yeah, okay. restaurant yes, facilities right. were there. That, yeah. So a lot of them went into that okay. as well. Uh, so basically, that is how they dealt with the situation. Wow. And uh, by God's grace, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So now, now that um, the president has eased the restrictions mm. pretty much, you know, um, to pre COVID mm. times, um, your, as, 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 you know, the hospitality industry. Yeah. I mean, what are you thinking uh, generally? We know COVID has not disappeared, but we are saying that the levels are quite low and therefore we can open up and get back to business, yeah. right? Yeah. I know that a lot of the facilities had no mask, uh, no entry restrictions. Yeah. What's the protocol moving forward? What's the general thinking in the hospitality industry? Okay, let, let me put it this way. You know, the industry tries a movement of people. Mm. That's the basic principle yes. of the industry. It yes. tries a movement of people. So anything that restricts movement of people mm. uh, affects... It's challenging, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So uh, with the lifting of the restrictions, what it means is that there's going to be more movement of people. Mm. Uh, for instance, the stadium capacity. Yes. Mm. Okay. So it means that people are going to travel across the regions to uh, to watch football matches. Mm. And mm. once they travel, yeah. hotels yeah. also the have their business. Also. Yeah, their business. The transport also have their business and yeah. so forth. Now, we met the Ghana Tourism Authority prior to the President's announcement okay. concerning some of these protocols. Mm. And the understanding is that we'll continue with the protocols. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yes, even though okay. it's been lifted. Okay. So we will continue with the protocols, especially with the hand, hand washing, washing. Yes. the nose mask and yeah. all that. Mm. Uh, so we are not assuming that it has disappeared completely, okay. as you rightly mm. said. Okay. We will mm. continue with that. You know, the hotels uh, place a lot of premium on safety mm. yes. and security. Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, so we are not going to joke with that at mm. all. Now, how, how are you going to reconcile that with a directive from the presidency, which is basically saying that people are free to move without wearing masks, and then an establishment mm. saying, you know, mm. well, we want you to wear your mask. And then a patron says, well, but I don't have to. It's not, you, you can't hold me to that. What, what do you do well, in those instances? Well, you know, to some extent, hotels enjoy this right of entry. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you, you need to abide by the rules. Mm -hmm. If you want to come in. If you want to come yeah. in. Okay. okay. So we will we'll take some mm. uh, steps in that direction. All right. Uh, okay. it's, it's for the safety of every guest and okay. staff mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. No, I, 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 I do realize that um, it's one of the things that will probably end up becoming, uh, you know, a challenge that mm. you will probably have to test the system a bit mm -hmm. and see, mm -hmm. you know, how people mm -hmm. would respond and react mm -hmm. to it. But and, I mean, and sorry, David, and yes. then you. Notice that the president also said that the entry to some of these the venues is, yeah. depends on the having the yes. card. Yeah. Okay. So you will, will, you will, you, will, you, will you be checking? Will you be checking? I want to believe that some of the hotels would want to check. That okay. is, if it's mandatory for us to check. Mm. Okay. Okay. If it's mandatory, I don't know how the health service is going to implement the aspect of the president's statement. Right. Because mm. usually the President comes up with a broad statement, yeah. and then the, the authorities then, authority would then yes, give the also. guidelines. So mm. we, we we await okay. the directive from the health service. Wow. If it's mandatory for us to check, why not? Mm. Okay, we, we will check that. But the using the nose mask and the yeah. other things will also be a way of checking. <laughs> <that>. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, well, I mean it's going to be interesting times ahead. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I think. People have people did get used to wearing masks. Mm -hmm. I'm so used to it now. Yeah. You're so used to it, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I have my, I have my, my pocket. Shop, <laughs> most people had their masks off. It's yeah. like freedom. In fact, mm -hmm. even when I landed back in Ghana on Monday yeah, that yeah, day, yeah. you know, the, the airport, all the yeah. workers had their masks off, and I'm like, yeah. people are like free, right? Yeah. But there were a couple of people who still who's had it still on, yeah, 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 you yeah, know. And I thought, oh, you know, if you put it on, are people gonna say, oh, you too? Why? What's all this? We can take it off now. But some people actually feel comfortable with that. Yes, yes, you, know? Yes, yes, yes. you know, I read an yeah. article that linked the wearing of the mask to the drop in the prevalence of cholera yeah. and those so cold those infections. Cold and you know? <laughs> yes, so actually it was interesting because you mentioned that because um, the we had a on Tuesday mm. uh, we have a segment called health on the health segment on mm. on this show, and um, a doctor was on or Dr. Kevin Owusu was with us and he was explaining that look actually COVID went um, sorry cholera went to almost mm -hmm. zero mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. almost mm -hmm. you know because it was a hand washing practices right that's so actually is a is, you yeah. know and it's you interesting know? because you're saying it's, it's so basic, so basic. but basic. I, it looks like the challenge with cholera is actually because we are not doing the very basic things mm -hmm. we should be mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so, so we should continue. I think so. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. You know, the and of course, especially. Yeah. 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 of course, in countries like um, uh, in, in, in the Far East, uh, Thailand and so on, those kind of countries, they wearing masks is it's, is something that normal, yeah. is in their culture mm. anyway. Mm. You know, mm. um, maybe because of the smog and all the those pollution. things that they've been struggling mm. with, you yeah. know, and all of that. Mm. But they, they, this was not a big deal to them, mm. you know. So I think that maybe we should also have the mindset that look, if I have a cold, just just put that on the mask, mask. Exactly. protect other exactly. people. Exactly. You know, yeah. just exactly. Let me exactly. put on the mask. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. like After that. two years of wearing it, I don't yeah. think yeah. 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 I also got used to not shaking hands. Yes. Yes. I love mm. that. Yeah. I, I, I'm okay just with giving you power. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're good. <laughs> people don't wash their hands. Yeah, like you know. It's nice. In the past, we didn't have an excuse for not shaking hands. Yes, but now we have an excuse. It's good. But but I'm sure you're very optimistic about the industry now because of. You know. Sure, sure, sure. You know, the I have always uh, said that if we should model our development mm. on tourism mm. and hospitality, mm. we'll go very far. Yes. So everything we do must be centered on yeah. tourism and yeah. hospitality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, when the president decided to rotate the celebration of the Independence Day, yes. I was like, Mm -hmm. The story is brilliant. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. You went mm -hmm. to Cape Coast, see yeah. Yeah. how the uh, hotels benefited. Yeah. Yeah. It was in the north. You yeah. know, so everything we do, including even our medical facilities, mm. health wise. Yes. Yeah. If you are building a facility and you are thinking of tourism, yeah. you build it in a particular way yes. yeah. to suit everybody. Yeah. So <laughs> now, since we have you here, let me ask this question. Um, in terms of facilities around the country, mm. All right. Um, what are we doing? I, I know it's a business decision in terms of, you know, you can't necessarily build a, 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 a thousand bed facility in certain regions because mm. your numbers, are, you, you can't handle the numbers. But sometimes too, we have what, what we do here um, 
uh, in the month of March, Heritage Caravan, where we travel around the yeah, country I'm with a that. lot of people. Mm -hmm. well, we, one of the challenges that we have in a lot of places we go is uh, the, the capacity to handle numbers. Because we, we are going with like what, 150, 160 mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. you know. And mm -hmm. even that, we mm -hmm. struggle mm -hmm. in some places, mm -hmm. you know, to have hotels that can handle those numbers mm -hmm. you know what's there is is there a discussion you know about because if we say tourism you're looking for people to come yeah. but can you handle mm -hmm. those numbers mm -hmm. in wherever the tourist sites are mm -hmm. you know good question good point the let me put it this way you know the uh, tourism is more of a public sector led mm -hmm and private sector driven. Yeah. Mm. So the public sector, the government sets mm. the environment that allows the private sector to, to also, also invest yeah. in it. And the government has sort of pulled out of mm. this uh, direct involvement mm. in say hotels and all that. Okay. Yeah. So the onus lies on the private sector to invest and that is where the challenge is. Mm. It's about the funds mm. to in, in, in invest. Yeah. We have a situation where some of the hotels have the capacity to, to expand mm. because there's space, there's land and everything. Okay. Yeah. But the funds to do to that. Do that. So and we all need to have to go to the same market right. mm. to borrow. And when you look at the interest or the lending rates there, mm -hmm. it's, it, it, it's so it's challenging. Yeah. And we've always said that the, the margins in our operation is so small. Really? Yes, yeah, it, is, it is. It is because the, the financial obligations is huge. Mm. Yes, it is. Is that why our hotels are so expensive here? Because when you compare to, to other countries you mm. visit and look at the hotel rates, and then to Ghana... It's expensive. I, I mean, that's my personal experience. Is that it's Koki, quite expensive. You, you, you may be right, uh, but then when we look at it that way, without considering the economic environment, mm. then it's not fair okay. <laughs> to compare that mm. because we deal with a lot of financial obligations, mm. A, mm. a lot of them from mm. taxes. Uh, to uh, the license fees, mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to even the cost of electricity, utilities, okay. yes. and, and, and all that. And you don't get any, so, any kind of waivers so, or nope. so, none? Nope. Apart from the recently we heard about the, uh, the youth involvement in some of these uh, businesses. Yeah. And I think one of them is tourism. If you enter into tourism you have some five years tax relief right okay but that one aside that that's aside, it. aside that no and then the the corporate tax yes ours was reduced to i think 22 percent instead mm. of the 25 percent so yeah wow so well, the no environment uh, environment is not easy mm. yes mm -hmm. environment is not easy and the sometimes you know the impression is that oh if the, the room is free or empty why don't you reduce, reduce the, rate, the yeah. rate but you see at a certain level, uh, at a certain threshold, if you leave the room empty, it's, it's cheaper, cheaper than getting somebody to get someone out. in. I get, <laughs> it. I get it. So you know, it's 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 and, and the, the the business is such that you are not going to have full occupancy mm. all the That's time. Right. So you need to balance it with the time that there is no occupancy because sometimes you can have zero occupancy. Yeah, and then your fixed recurrent expenditure is waiting for you. Salary is waiting for you. And all those things. So the regulatory fees are waiting for it's you. It's not easy. They don't care whether you have <laughs> occupancy or not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So you need to balance the rates well, yeah. very, very well. Otherwise, you run out of business. Yeah. Okay. But what is it that we can do? Because you see, mm -hmm. all the things that you're you're mentioning, I'm just wondering that how is it that hotels mm -hmm. in um, other countries where you know maybe their, their hotel room is going for let's say half the rate for the same star level mm -hmm. that a hotel are so if you take a three star or a four star the same star in a different country is looking at maybe half the price in some countries mm -hmm. you know for the room um what is it they are doing that they, 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 that enables them to be able to to have the rates that low mm -hmm. you know compared to ours and what can we do you know, David, it, it comes back to this same um, issue of the economic environment mm. in which we operate. And mm. I have I've challenged the Ghana Tourism Authority and the Minister of Tourism Arts and Culture 
to investigate or research into some of these things. Mm. Okay. Now, if you take the Ghanaian environment, let's look at the lending rates. Okay. Right. Let's look at the cost of uh, power, mm. cost of water. Mm. Let's look at our taxes. Okay. Let's look at uh, our regulatory fees. Mm. Let's look at even the fuel prices. Yeah. Because the hotels operate on some of these, these yeah. things, fuel and all yeah. those things. Okay. Now, when we have looked at all these things and mm. compared it to the countries that we keep it. on comparing, okay. Okay. then we can establish okay. a clear mm. uh, basis mm. for, for some of the mm. statements we make. Yeah. Otherwise, then it becomes, Difficult. you are comparing yeah. probably apples, apples and oranges, and oranges as they say. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. But wow. I suppose good news for the easing of restrictions certainly, for the industry. Certainly, certainly, certainly. For me, I see it as an added bonus right. because there's been some stability already. So this mm. is going to mm. add to our, our work as well. True. Mm. Okay. Very nice. Mm. I, I'm excited as well. Try to travel a bit more domestically. And yep. just let people know about your facility. Where, where oh, I have a very it? small facility <laughs> at uh, North Kaneshi, okay. Venaco Lodge, near St. Teresa's School. Okay. Ah, so, yeah. okay. How far from St. Teresa's? Oh, you know, from the Swan Lake end. Yes. At the end of the St. Teresa's wall. Yes. It's on Manchester Street. Yes. Yeah, right there. Okay. So Just 100 meters. Okay. From, it's a small hotel, but mm. I'm managing the big hotel singer. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. I like, yeah. I like well, it. I like that. I like that. I mean, all the best to you. And, Th and your you. industry. Thank you. Um, Ghana, we're just ripe and prime for capitalizing on our tourism potential. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Hopefully and this thank will be a you, City point. TV. You know, I, I think this is my first time in the studio, okay. but I keep uh, granting interviews on a City TV. And so a lot of people know me through city <laughs> TV appearance, yeah, yeah on business, uh, oh. a business uh, program as well. Oh, great. And then also to say that, you know, the, the tourism projects you've been undertaking, yes. Yes. it's really helpful. Mm. Great. We'll get business through that. Yes. We'll, 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 get, <laughs> we'll, we'll, get, we'll delve more into this in just a little bit. Let's take a quick break and then we'll come back and continue the conversation. Ago. Welcome back now. We want to hear from you wherever you are around the country or even be outside the country. You want to get involved in the conversations that we're having here. What your experiences have been, what your thoughts are regarding the hospitality industry in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And just share that with us. Hashtag is breakfast daily on social media platforms. And the WhatsApp line is 0550-585832. Now we've been joined uh, by the administrator of the events uh, Vendors Association of Ghana. Um, of course, uh, Dr. Nyameke is still uh, Nyameke is still with us, um, the president of the Ghana Hotels Association. Now, Richmond Hagen Ejiri has joined us on mm -hmm. the set. Welcome. Thank you, boss. Yeah. And so yeah, so we've been we've been we've been discussing already. Um, you know the uh, easing of restrictions um, by the president. Um, and, uh, you know, the impact it's had so far, you know, um, actually the impact that COVID had initially on, yeah. on, on events, vendors, uh, tourism industry in general. Um, what has your experience been? 2020 March, we are in 2022 March, two years ago. How did that impact you, your industry? Okay, so let me say a very good morning to our cherished viewers. I think it's a very good thing. And let me also commend CTTV. Since day one of this COVID, you people have been consistently be coming to us for updates and whatever that is going on with our sector. And I think it's very commendable. Good. Let me say good morning to Auntie Kate, president of EVAC. Uh, this issue was really a big blow to us. Mm. Very, very big blow. Because, you know, in event, it's a chain. Mm. And when you pay someone, money exchange hands within some few seconds. Mm -hmm. And the event calendar starts somewhere from 
uh, June, July, August that way, mm. up to April that way. Okay. So a lot of people have paid. And you know, we're just coming from the year of return and everything. So there were a lot of events in sequence at that moment. So with people, our client, and most of our vendors have received a lot of money from people. Yeah. So when it happened that way, especially that Sunday that the president announced, <laughs> it was a big blow. So a lot of people were calling our vendors, I want my money yes. back, I want my money back. And you know, they were also calling the association. Yeah. So what we did at the moment was that to put things together, have an emergency meeting, and in that meeting, we decided to come with a campaign. Okay. That is, we, 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 we can reschedule, okay. but we should postpone the event, but we can't cancel it. Mm. Right. So we started with that campaign. And as, aside that, we had a lawyer. Okay. Mm. So we realized that, mm. one challenge that we realized that, you know, this COVID-2 has brought a lot of frustration mm. because we realized a lot of our people didn't know how to do contacts mm. with their clients. Okay. So quickly, we have to, together and organize seminars all right so let's just talk about some of the events for instance weddings mm. um even birthday parties you know lots of celebratory things that people mm. had planned as he's saying getting to that that time people getting married mm. you know they're coming home for those mm. things people are having babies mm. they want nice outdooring so even renting furniture mm. their deco all yeah. of that falls into it yeah cakes you know food yeah caterers all of that um for facilities like hotels did you find the same thing where people had book spaces for members of your organization, Dr. Nyamike, and now all of a sudden, what do you do? Do you refund them for the booking, you know, or do you just try to postpone it for a date where you don't even know what date you can postpone it to? Because as far as we were concerned, the lockdown was never ending or the, the restrictions were never ending. So how did you also deal with that in, in your sector? We had a lot of that. We had a lot of that. And of course, it's related to what Richmond is saying. Mm. They also organize quite a number of programs in the uh, hotel facilities. Okay. So the challenge there, as he rightly said, mm. was that money is some money has changed hands exchange, already. Exchange, yeah. exchange hands mm -hmm. And then you mm. uh, some were able to negotiate. Okay. Negotiate rescheduling. Mm. But that also had its own challenge because that was in the heat exactly. of the part where you didn't really know when. So in some cases, uh, fortunately for us, we didn't receive any legal okay. challenges okay. there. At least none came to See, our attention. I guess people okay. would understand people, that your yes, hands are tied. Exactly, I mean, what can you do? Exactly, exactly. It, so it, so we, the, some of the hotels got some uh, clients to reschedule, mm -hmm. albeit some... Uh, what was the right expression? Uh, on to further notice, <laughs> kind, <laughs> kind, yeah, of, you know. kind of rescheduling. Okay, yeah. so because the the you know monies have a way of uh, uh, being used for any other thing once it's in your possession. Mm. So yeah. you, you pay to book, yeah. Yeah. and then the hotel doesn't sit on the money. Of course, yeah. you've you got use it for yes. some yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. So when it comes to refund, it's, it's mm. not an easy task at all. Mm. But in a way, they found a way to deal with it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I knew of some people who, the day, I think, like you said, the announcement was Sunday or so. Yeah, it was a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And people had events coming yeah, up. That that week, that I mean, yeah, that week. Yeah. Yes. It was like, yes. ah, so yeah. what do we yeah. do? We've yeah. invited yeah. our yeah. guests. Yeah. Yeah. You've sent invitations. Yeah. That's a cost. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you've yeah. booked your, your, your dress, your everything. Everybody felt it. Everybody, Everybody was like, it. what's yeah. going on, you know? So, Even, so yeah. quickly, the good thing is that, like you rightly indicated earlier, on, the various parties... Mm. The various parties understood that okay. this one, yeah, yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. nobody's yeah. fault. <laughs> nobody's exactly. Fault. So let's yeah. all reason yeah. to yes. a certain level yeah. and then yeah. come to some yeah. compromise. Yeah. So That's good. <laughs> so, Richmond, <laughs> after you guys sat down and decided that, listen, um, let's figure out a way to solve this. Uh, just tell us of some of the some of the experiences you had with with mm. with clients, people who had actually paid money. You know, uh, uh, you know, a lot of money goes mm. into events. Mm. Yeah. And as she said, it's florists, decor person, mm. carpenters, <laughs> designers. <laughs> so <laughs> there was a lot of money. Sounds and some of, these people, yeah. some of these people didn't understand this at all. Yeah. So it was a big blow. So we had an association lawyer that tackled that with clients. Mm. And it was not an easy thing. Mm. So quickly, the next thing we have to do is to send a proposal to government. Mm. So doctor oh. here, we've met a couple of times. Okay. So we, did a, we drafted that 100 per event 
four on the table, oh, five. So we drafted a suggestion oh, to, to the, the government. government. Okay. So we sent it to GTA to uh, the tourism mm. mini minister, then Honorable Barbara. Then yeah. so we met me, Doctor. We went to the president. Okay. We were all together that day, okay. Okay. and we submitted that proposal. Mm. So after that was when the president came to announce that okay. we can have mm. hundred per event. Mm. We can mm. have. So we did okay. that proposal. Okay. We had a meeting with them, yeah. we had a consultation, and wow. it was done. So the president came to announce that, okay, now we can have 100, we can mm. have this, mm. we should observe. So it was all the things that we did in the proposal <coughs> that was shared. So, yeah. so yeah. you've been behind the scenes <coughs> yes. working, working on this. Every <laughs> blessed day. Quietly. Okay, all right. So. Every blessed day. Yeah. And, uh, but one challenge that we had was that when we had the plan and everything, you will hear here, the main government has also broken the protocols here. <laughs> so we were also confused at that time. That I, I, we've all started to plan this. I know, and right? All, <laughs> there was elections <laughs> going on. There was Sounds this. like animal farming. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the same people come and, and say, ah, what is this? Yeah. But later we realized that we were also putting things in shape and the yeah. public too was bashing them. So we were putting things <laughs> in shape at that time. That was the only challenge we had <sighs> then. So we started with a campaign, but it also helped Mm. all of us to come together mm -hmm. to come together yeah. at that time yeah. because we needed numbers to mm. speak mm. Uh, on issues so mm. we came together and things were okay from then we decided to do the hundred per event and the small small event but it yeah. wasn't easy yeah. mm. because in our sector now a lot of people are into our sector that and we engage the hotels we yeah. engage a lot of facilities yeah. in the sector so uh, it was a big blow mm. and some of our members also do this as a full-time work now yeah. 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 So, and they have work Yes. Mm. 10, 15 and all that things yeah. and look at all these things yeah. and you know we don't have money to also be giving to them after <laughs> that time so it was a big problem but one challenge too that we have to also mention is that during the stimulus package mm. yes. a lot of our members didn't get it mm. a lot yeah. we didn't know which people had it um, yet to know which people had it but a I lot know, of our I members because the president mentioned it on that day and mm. a lot of our members we applied we passed through the new process within the tourism we had a grant for the tourism well, a lot of our members didn't get it, so mm. we're a little bit confused, mm. and we are yet to get answers from wow. them. Too. Maybe if they can bring it back, it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you'll take it out you, anyway. That's about it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, now, where we find ourselves, okay, easing of restrictions. Have you have you felt the impact already? Are you feeling the impact? What are you looking forward to? Oh, you know, I think we have to be real. Mm. We we are operating. Mm. I was this about to say yeah. we are yeah. operating. The, the, we're the operating. events have been happening. Yeah, <laughs> things were going on. Yeah. Every yeah. blessed day, yeah. uh, including the main people, the actors themselves, they were doing a lot of events. Yeah. So this just came to cement what we are doing already. Already, already. Okay. yes. But notwithstanding, we are happy with the announcement. It has also helped, especially not wearing of nose marks and other things but we will still observe the protocol mm. in various events mm. that we will do because okay, we think that it's real and we have to keep ourselves you know it, this thing that came uh, the COVID has also helped us to even learn how to wash our hands and a little bit you know yes. these are all some of the things that we need to appreciate yeah. one way or the other and yeah. we'll still do that in our various events and mm. everything ensure that there is social distancing one way or the other mm. and make things work out because it has really put us in shape mm. yes one thing that i also have to mention that doctor we've always had issue with and anytime we meet we have issue is the gta oh. uh, partnering solidly with us mm. and making sure that every vendor registered with an association okay yeah so that we can regulate them and we know the members mm. Mm. so if it happens that gta is doing everything they don't know the members okay. and you know everybody is doing every anything at any point in time but when they when we come together and work things out we can get a solid a, a, a document for statistics or to prove something whenever we are making argument mm, mm. and moving forward we can ensure a straight but the GT also did well they started with some training for some of uh, 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 members and other things giving us some free registration to come on board come and register with them and everything that was very laudable and mm. we need to applaud them for that is yeah. your is your is your association the only vendors association in Ghana or the other others yes because of this thing that i mentioned mm. a lot of people are getting sub associations okay. oh. yes we have the numbers now we okay. have the platforms now like the hotels association we have two as well two strong ones the progressive mm -hmm. ones and the 
Uh -huh. And this is why we want the GTA to come in and say that, okay, this is what we recognize. Okay. And this is what we want to work with. Mm. So we'll come together and make it one mm. and build up a better uh, yeah. uh, 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 argument whenever you are, you are, you are mm. in trouble or mm. in challenges or whenever you need something from, mm. from government. So that is where the issue is mm. now. There are other sub-sub associations, but we are the biggest, you may have the biggest, but like how the medical council is doing, everybody must be on board. Mm -hmm. Like how the Ghana Bar Association, yeah. everybody must be on board so that you can speak to issues mm. and make things clear. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. both of you have reiterated that really well because yeah. like having a seat at the table, yes. for instance, That's to make decisions or to mm. influence decisions mm -hmm. is so important. And if you were not that organized, yeah. I doubt anyone would, would have given you a second look yeah, or even yeah. listen to the input that you had yeah. so it is important you know for significant industries to have mm. you know solid associations you wanted to say something yeah, let me, yeah let me add something to what Richard yeah. said the with regards to the what we call the mandatory membership mm. we actually sent a proposal to the gta okay and so far the response we keep hearing is that because of the issue of freedom of association, mm. the document has been sent to the Attorney General oh. Department to advise on that. Okay. Uh, we've been waiting patience, but our patience mm -hmm. is, is wearing is thin. Yeah, <laughs> because it's, it's been some months now. Yeah. So if if Akwesi is listening to me <laughs> now, please, we want a we want a response. Yeah, because like you already said, it's it's something that will help the industry. Yeah. yeah. The associations, and here we are not trying to say focus on just one association. As many associations as they can be, once you are a tourism and hospitality enterprise, mm. belong. Okay. Right. And it's for the GTA to uh, uh, say that this association is worthy of recognition uh, yes, or certification. Worth. Exactly. So they should do some certification. Yes. And then every enterprise must belong. Because mm. mm. it's a very sensitive industry. Mm. I mean, it's, yes. it's so, so here's what I'm also thinking. Um, I, I, I do understand the people whose argument is that, uh, you know, freedom of association. Mm. So you can set up any, any number of associations you want. You can join whichever association you want. But I also understand your point you're making, you know, about the singular unit where everybody belongs. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering that maybe the, maybe the route to take is to, is to have attractive benefits of being part of the main association so that it's like automatically individuals are saying, you know what, why am I joining this one? This is the one I want to be mm -hmm. part mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, are there things like incentives of being part of your association. D David, let me correct this. Okay. What we are saying is that every tourism and hospitality enterprise should belong to an association. Mm -hmm. So if there are two associations, three hotels association, four, five, so long as they've been certified by GT, like right there, then every hotel must belong, and the same applies to the event mm -hmm. business. Okay, mm -hmm. so that, okay. That, that, that's that, that's okay. it. Now, it is about what the association will do for the members. Yes, that will indicate whether they a hotel would want to join, join, join yeah, or not. But we want yeah. that to be mandatory. Yeah. But back to your point, there are several benefits mm. in, in belonging to the association. I'm sure Richmond can also talk about some. But basically, you see. We are the mouthpiece of the industry. Mm. I mean, there are several policies that guide our business. Every aspect of our business is guided by the, an act. Mm. Environmental Protection Agency, we are there. Mm. Food and Drugs Authority, mm. we are there. Mm. Ghana Tourism Authority, we, we are, are there. there. Yeah. National Fire Service, mm. we are there. Insurance. These are all acts of parliament mm. which we have to abide by. Okay. But if there are certain aspects or provisions in the act which is not comfortable to us as an industry, mm. somebody must talk about it. Yes. And it's the association that talks about it. Yeah. Again, we also serve as a conduit for information flow. GTA comes out with a lot of information all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I see GTA, uh, technically, they come to us maybe once or twice a year. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they don't really have the strength to do that. Right. Okay. The human resource strength yeah. to do that. Yeah. So usually when they come for licensing, they come and inspect your place and then they come and issue your license. The next time you see, they will be a year after. Mm. The hotels, the association is with members on the ground. Yeah. So when, especially with the, even this COVID, when the COVID, we met them several times, like Richmond mm. indicated. Mm. 
and we were serving as the conduit for information right. to the hotels. Yeah. Right. Okay, so we we and information flow is very important in the yeah. in, in the industry. Yeah. And of course, we negotiate with the regulatory bodies, mm. Mm -hmm. but for the association, regulatory fees would have been be much higher. Up the roof. Yeah. And don't forget the the uh, municipal and district assemblies. <laughs> I'm not that. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So these are all things that the association mm. does. So anything to do in the industry, we, 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 we do it. And fortunately, we've come to the point where we've been able to gain some recognition mm. that every time the, recently the National Security invited us for a meeting okay. on security issues okay. with what okay. is happening in the sub-region. Yeah. Right. You know that you know hotels are yes. very sensitive yes. when it comes to that. Yes. So we made the National Security Coordinator mm. So these are all things that the, the association does. There's okay. a lot. Of <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and, you know, when you are part of us, there are a lot of benefits. Mm. You know, when you are a certified member, anytime, like, you are, you are a vendor and you want something from another vendor, mm. it's being discounted mm. okay. to up to 20%. Because you are part of the association. Of, uh, yeah. Secondly, to when you have an event mm. and you need other members to be on board, mm. it's just a phone call or just a platform that we yeah. have and you put... Yeah. And we rent materials. Okay. So anytime you want to rent something, mm. we just have to use your vendor card mm. to go and rent. Okay. And we mobilize, we do award scheme like the Ghana Event Insurance uh, Industry our Conference that we use to also empower members. So we invite some people from outside, mm. prominent okay. event vendors, to come and speak to our members. Mm. And, you know, for instance, uh, let me not mention just recent, one of the flashy wedding that happened just recently mm. last week. Mm. It was done by our members. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Most of the team. Yeah. And almost all the big weddings we have, mm. just putting things together, just within a few days, we can put ourselves together yeah. and just do something for you. So mm. these are the benefits that we get. We do conferences. We just went to Dubai just last week, just to attend oh. conferences to just empower our members okay. and everything. So okay. I think things are working out, yeah. but we mm. just need the numbers to also put things together. It helps Fantastic. to improve standards. standards. Yeah. 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 High standards. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But David, let me quickly yeah. bring in... Wrap it up for us. Yes. Yeah. Let me quickly bring in the Ghana Tourism Federation. Okay. Okay. Which is the umbrella body of the various uh, tourism and trade, uh, hospitality trade associations. Okay. 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 Yes. So, okay. it's... Uh, so the event uh, organizers are there, hotels associations are there, mm. car rentals wow. are there, the restaurant okay. operators are there, the chop operators are there. Everyone they are, in they that are, they are there. And government recognizes the federation okay. as that umbrella body. So okay. everything is channeled through the federation. Mm. And the federation is made up of the, the various trade the associations. Association. So every president of a trade association is a is council there. member. Of oh. the federation, okay. yeah, so it kind of very it, is a very, it, is, it is very organized. Yeah, it is very, 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 very organized. Very organized. Yeah, yeah. Okay. How do people get in touch with either of you? If you can just give us your socials, are you on social media? How can okay, get in with touch? Us, Ghana Hotels Association, you can go to Ghana Hotels Association uh, uh, dot com. Okay, we okay. have website. the website. Yeah, the and then the uh, Facebook. Okay. we are also mm -hmm. on the. Well. Okay. Fantastic. What about you? Yes. Also, yeah. Event Vendors Association on mm. all the social media, media. platforms. Okay. And uh, <coughs> if you just you can visit our office at mm. Butchie, okay. uh, Butchie, uh, uh Pentacles Junction. Mm. Our office is there at uh, Daddy Ash, the building. Our office is there. And just you, when you go online, you just Event Vendors Association, get in touch with okay. us on social media platforms, okay. and mm -hmm. we will just take it from there. Okay. And we urge everyone to come on board so that it makes our work mm -hmm. solid. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Very All right. Nice. Thank you very much for Thank joining you. us this morning. Yeah. Really appreciate your time. We've been speaking with Dr. Edward Nyameke, who is the president of the Ghana Hotels Association, mm -hmm. and uh, Mr. Richmond Hagan Ejiri, who is the administrator for the Events Vendors Association of Ghana.